everybody and welcome to A Level Further Maths. That's the first video I'm doing on the channel about further mathematics. So I want to go right into this and we'll start right now with a prior knowledge check. Okay, prior knowledge check should be nice and simple. Uh, question number one solve the equation 2e to the x minus e to the minus x equals 2. Question 2 show that 1 over cos squared x minus tan squared x is 1 and 3 the integral between 0 and pi of e to the x sine x dx is a half of 1 plus e to the pi make sure you've done those when you've done them so question 2 and 3 I'm not going to physically show those in this video because that's what I expect for question 1 I'll tell you what the solution is for 2 and 3 I expect you to do those on your own uh, with very little help at all because when we get into this it will be very very different also for question 3 if you got 1 plus e to the pi over 2 that is not quite correct but you do need to finish it off by fractioning the half out ok so answers are as follows for question number 1 you need log of 1 plus root 3 over 2 or I would accept uh, log of a half plus root 3 over 2, I'd also accept that. Question 2, just need to make sure you've shown it correctly, as I've said already. And question 3, make sure you've shown that correctly as well. Integrals are not easy, and they are quite long, but make sure you are putting all the steps to get to the final answer. If you've got any problems, let me, in the, let me know in the comments, and I'll try and get back to you as quickly as possible in the next two next. That's two, two or three days it'll take. Okay. Okay, so hyperbolic functions is what we're looking at today. So you can use hyperbolic, you can define hyperbolic functions using, trigon using trigonometry and exponential functions. Hyperbolic functions are part of the conic sections, if you will. Unfortunately, this chapter does not give a wide picture of this area. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about these and fill in some of the gaps, I'd suggest FP1 or Further Pure 1, Chapter 3, if you want to have a look at some more of this stuff. And as well, there's a link in the top left hand corner, make sure you just copy it correctly into your browser, and you can have a look at this kind of stuff. Okay? Uh, so, hyperbolic functions are part of the conic sections. The conic sections arise from the idea of a plane intersecting one or two naps of a cone. Each side is called a nappe, if you will. Now, it sounds really weird, weird and rude, but hey. Um, you'll be familiar with some of the shapes formed. In each case, the cone is vertical. So, like that, for example. So the circle, if the plane is horizontal, then x squared plus y squared will be equal to 1, the basic unit circle. For the second one, got an ellipse which you'll see in further pure one chapter three if you are doing further maths which i hope you are if the plane is tilted but still intersects the cone on both sides then that implies that x squared over nine plus the y squared over 20 should be equal to two so a parabola if the plane is parallel to the slope of the cone then y would equal x squared Okay, so these diagrams, I would suggest learning. I would draw them as they are on the screen there. Make sure when you're watching this video that you are zoomed to right in because I know the text is quite small, I can't help that unfortunately. But yes, that's what you need to be doing. And finally, we've got the hyperbola. If the plane is vertical or tilted, so it intersects both sides, and so y would equal 1 over x. Okay, that is a reciprocal graph, and you should have seen that in normal level maths, which you should be taking alongside further maths, okay? Right then, so I've got the unit circle. For the unit circle with equation x squared plus y squared equals 1, mathematicians found uh, they could describe it parametrically using x is cosine theta and y equals sine theta. Okay, now you've seen this in non level maths, this is nothing old to you, but uh, make sure you do know it. A natural 
follow-on question was whether the same could be done for the hyperbolic shape x squared minus y squared one. It looks kind of weird, doesn't it? It looks like a forward C and a backward C. I don't know what you think. So I'm going to try and describe points on this curve parametrically. So, if cos squared plus sine squared equals 1, if we divide 3 by cos squared, I get 1 plus tan squared is sec squared. Well, our identities need to learn. If I take tan squared from both sides, and I let x is sec theta and y be tan theta. So the curve x squared minus y squared equals 1 can be described with parametric equation x equals sec theta and y equals tan of theta. It's really important to note that for this, theta does not represent the angle of the point from the origin as far as for the unit circle anyway. It's basically just a third parameter used in the same way that we used T for parametric equations in the past. Okay, this way is simple, the simplest to derive, but it's not the way that's used in this chapter. So the method I'm using here is used in the further pure one textbook, if we're going to have a look at that. But this is in core pure, which is CP2, I don't believe. It's in the full level stuff, that's. Okay, so. If we let x equal e to the t plus e to the minus t of 2, and let y equal e to the t minus e to the minus t of 2, we've got a positive and a negative. Now, subbing that in, I don't forget I need to square everything as well. Expanding all that bracket, so it looks a right mess. But expanding that, I get e to the 2t plus 2t plus 2 e to the 0 plus e to the minus 2t over 4. Take away e to the 2t minus 2e to the 0 plus e to the minus 2t over 4. And that's equal to 1. So, well, 2e to the 0, well, anything to the power of 0 is 1. So, using that, I can simplify that down a little bit. Remember, it's just e to the 0 that tends to 1. You do need to include the 2 still. Alright, as a single fraction, be careful with your signs as well. So, as a single fraction, I can simplify that left hand side by collecting right terms. And I get 4 over 4, which is equal to 1. So the original relationship can also be written parametrically using x equals e to the t plus e to the minus t of 2, and y equals e to the t minus e to the minus t of 2. Similar to the unit circle, the horizontal distances are described using sine and cosine, but in this case, shine and cosh, that shine means hyperbolic sine. Now the way I said that there is shine, as in the sunshine. Now, these are pronounced really weird, and you'll see this later on in the video. I pronounce them as shine, kosh, and I pronounce tan, tan h as than. You might also hear them called cinch, kosh, and tanch, with a ch in there, no reason why. There you go. So. We also just saw that the horizontal and vertical distances can be described using e to the theta plus e to the minus theta over 2 and e to the theta minus e to the minus theta over 2. Okay, so it therefore follows that sine h theta is, or shine, is, shine, shine theta is e to the theta minus e to the minus theta over 2. And cosh theta is e to the theta plus e to the minus theta over 2. Remember, if you've not realised what e is before, that's what the prime knowledge chapter is all about. It's getting used to using e and solving those. Okay. So remember that theta is just now being used as a third parameter and not an angle. So using the relationship we know about, using the, the tan of x is equal to shine x sub cosh x, we can replace using what we know, so what we just found a minute ago. By the way, the shine and cosh I would recommend learning. Otherwise you could have a tough time. If we multiply the top and bottom by 2, we get rid of the denominators. And so, if we multiply by e to the x, we end up with e to the 2x minus 1 over e to the 2x plus 1. And funnily enough, that is that. Make sure you know how to say them. Well, funnily enough, I've just been checking about that. Also, if you check around online, 
you, you will find a variety of different ways that are used. For example, shine or cinch, as I've just mentioned, got cosh and tanch as well. Now, you've also got the reciprocal functions. So, you've got cold sec, sec and cot. Well, in the hyperbolic form, you've got cold sec, sec and cot. Or cough, if you want to call it that. Okay. So make sure you're pronouncing them correctly, otherwise you won't have a clue what you're saying. So make sure you pronounce them right. You do not get given these in the formula booklet, so in other words, you need to basically learn them. You want not these directly in this particular chapter, the reciprocals, off your exam, but if you're confident, you can use them if you would like to. But they're not mandatory. It's the ones that are here that I've circled in blue, not the ones that have the blue rectangle, but the ones I've circled are the ones that are recommended to learn because you're not giving it the final book away. Alright, shall we keep going? Keep going. So, find to two decimal places the value of shine 3. Well, if we sub in x is 3, and then find the calculator, I get 10.02. Nice. Find 2DP the... Okay, so find 2DP the value of cosh of 1. Right. Well, using your knowledge of substitution, if I sub in x is 1, I calculate and I get cosh of 3 equal to 1.54. Make sure you check that on your calculator and you get the same as me. If there are any errors, I shall spot them and put them in the edit when I edit it. Another one here, find 2dp the value of, of tanch of 0.8, or than, whatever you call it. Doesn't matter, as long as you're pronouncing it correctly. Sub in 0.8, and I get out 0.66 using those relationships in the top left hand corner of your screen. It's not bad this, is it? Let me know if you enjoying this in the comments down below. I'd love to know, know your thoughts. Another one here, find the exact value of, of than of log of 4. This is natural log, of course, because A and natural log are highly linked. Remember, if you don't know what natural logarithm is, um, then how can I explain it? Well, if I put E to the natural log of X, they cancel and I'm left with 1. Because the E and the log cancel. So make sure you've learned about exponential and logarithms before you get onto this. Funnily enough, I taught exponential and logarithms back on the channel. I shall link that down below if you're wondering where on earth that is in the ALO maths playlist. This will be in a separate playlist on the ALO further maths, but make sure you are still watching these because these are pretty interesting. So let's crack on. So sub in log of 4. Now if I use the power law, I can bring the power down to the front. If I get e to log of 4 squared minus 1, and e to log of 4 squared plus 1 on the bottom. If I simplify that, the e and the log will cancel as I've shown you. And I'm ending up with 15 over 17. And that's the exact value. Now, as it said, exact value, make sure that you're not converting it to a decimal, because you'll lose the mark. You'll lose that final mark. <laughs> okay, I think this is the last one. Find the value of x for which of shine of x is 5. Give your answer to two decimal places. Okay. If I should... If I sub in shine of 5, then 5 is e to the x minus e to the minus x up to. If I multiply both sides by e to the x, I get 10 e to the x is equal to e to the 2x minus 1. If I subtract e to the 10x, then I get a lovely quadratic in e. If I let y equal e to the x, solve using the prefer method, or which one you do not prefer. And I end up with 5 plus a minus 26. Remember, there is only a solution if e to the x is positive. Then we end up with log of 5 plus root 26, which is 2.31. Okay. Okay, so. You can also sketch the hyperbolic functions shine, caution, and fan. Okay, so we're going to start with shine. Now, 
Now, we know what shine is. We know that shine is y equals e to the x minus e to the minus x, or all over 2. Now, I can write it differently and put e to the x plus minus e to the minus x and divide it all by 2. You can think of this as the mean of the graphs y equals x e to the x and y equals minus e to the minus x. So if we have a look at that, now that shine is in between uh, the two curves of e to the x. The one that is negative and the one that is positive, so the one in the red and one in the blue. The one in the bold black is in the black dotted is shine x. So if you're struggling to draw the curve, I'd recommend drawing the red and the blue ones first and then figuring out where shine should go. So why put shine x looks like that. Now if we look at cosh, cosh is y equals e to the x plus e to the minus x all over 2. Well that's y equals e to the x plus e to the minus x all over 2 in the brackets. Think of this as y equals e to the x and y equals e to the minus x, so no negative in the front, this is now a positive. And then cosh kind of goes in between, if you will. Now, the fun thing is, is the shape of y equals cosh x is a quaternary. And if you know what a quaternary is, it is what I've put a picture on the screen. That picture I will give credit to in the description down below. If you wonder where that picture came from. But yeah, it's a quaternary. And it's basically a long chain joined together around the pole. <laughs> but I thought it looked nice. And that's what it looked like to me, so there you go. Quaternary comes from the Latin word catena, which means chain. Okay. So, this curve, y equals shine x, as drawn as using Desmos. Desmos is a free program where you can graph and basically look at different various variations of curves, including the hyperbolics. The hyperbolics are included. So if we have a look at y plus shine x, we can separate the what shine is apart into two fractions. We rewrite it as e to the x all over 2 minus 1 over 2 e to the x. Looks better like that. So we know as x tends to infinity, the e to, e to the x will also tend to infinity. We also know as x tends to minus infinity, the e to the x will tend to zero. So that's approximately minus 1 over 2 e to the x. Same as minus e to the minus x over 2. So as x tends to plus or minus infinity, the size of the graph tends towards the graph of y equals minus e to the minus x over 2 and y equals e to the x over 2. Also, for any value of x, shine of minus x is the same as minus shine of x. And it's the same for the sine curve as well, for normal sine, not hyperbolic. Okay. This means that y plus shine x is an odd function, which basically means it's got rotational symmetry around the origin. Pretty interesting. Kosh then, also drawn using Desmos. I can separate it apart again into two separate fractions, rewrite it, and as x will tend to infinity, e to the x will tend to infinity. So that's approximately e to the x sub 2. The other one is x tends to minus infinity, that e to the x will tend to 0. So I end up with 1 over 2 e to the x, which is the same as e to the minus x sub 2, if you prefer it like that. So as x tends to plus or minus infinity, the size of the graph tends towards the graph of y equals e to the minus x over 2 and y equals e to the x over 2 on the right. Also for any value of x, cosh of x is equal to cosh of minus x. And it's the same for the cosine graph as well. Okay. This means that y equals cosh x is an even function, 
which means it's got reflection symmetry in the y-axis. Okay. Wondering where the reflection is? It's in the y-axis. Okay. That's clear when x is zero. So it's the line x equals zero. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the line y. That's the curve y plus cos x. Okay, so the graph of tan then. Well, using the tan is shine over cosh. So using your bugs on the trig knowledge. When x is zero, well, I get zero over one, which is zero. So the curve will go through the orange zero, zero. So as x tends to infinity, we can use the approximations on the previous slide we've just seen of than x being approximately to e to the x sub 2 divided by e to the x sub 2, which is 1, and as well as x tends to minus infinity, we can use the same as we've just seen, we get minus e to the minus x sub 2, and e to the minus x sub 2, which is minus 1. So the last thing I've put on here is there will be asymptotes with the lines y equals 1 and y equals minus 1. So, we know the curve path through 0, 0, and we know there'll be asymptotes at y equals 1 and y equals minus 1. As so. And that is how we get the curve of y equals tan. So there's three hyperbolic functions drawn in the graph form, if you will. So, now, so you need to be able to use the inverse hyperbolic functions. Now the inverse of sine x is r sine x, or r sine x. It's got a word r in it, I know, very mature. Uh, or it's the same as sine to the minus one of x. I prefer r sine of x personally, but you do you, we're all different. Remember that an inverse function is a reflection of the original function in the line y equals x. Funnily enough, as shown in the diagram from Canley from Desmos, of course, again. Also remember that an inverse only exists when a function is a one-to-one -one function. Okay? So for arc cosh, or arc cosh x, or cosh to the minus one, since the function y equals cosh x is many-to-one, it needs to be restricted to a domain of x being greater than or equal to zero in order to have an inverse. Okay. And we've got the graph. Neatly so. Finally, our tan of x, or tan, or tan to the minus one. So we've got, since the function y equals tan x has a range of minus one between tan x and less than 1, this will become the domain of the inverse function. Okay, as seen on the diagram. Okay then, so here are the domains of the three inverse functions. So the domain of r shine is where x belongs to the real numbers. For the r cosh, we have x being greater than or equal to 1, and for r than of x, we've got the domain as the mod x, it has to be less than 1. Okay. They're very different from their original uh, functions of shine, cosh, and tan, and sine, cos, cosine, and tangent as well. So the inverse hyperbolic functions can also be expressed using logarithms. Now, logarithms are the inverse of exponentials, so this is what you would expect. So, here's a question. Show that r sine x is equal to the log of x plus the square root of x squared plus 1. First thing, I want to let y be the r sine x. So, we get shine of y is equal to x. Replace with the expression you've just seen in the beginning, which is also in the top left hand corner. And if we multiply through by 2, we get 2x is e to the y minus e to the minus y is equal to 2x. Multiply by e to the y, I get e to the 2y minus 1 will be equal to 2x e to the y. We subtract that 2x e to the y, 
and we complete the square for the first two turns. Unfortunately, you have to complete the square, there's no option to. Okay, if we add the x squared plus 1 from square root, get e to the y minus x is e to plus or minus the square root of x squared plus 1. It's similar to what we want, but it's not quite there just yet. If we add the x, we get e to the y is e to x plus or minus the square root of x squared plus 1. Finish it off, so it clearly must be true that the square root of x squared plus 1 is greater than the square root of x squared. Okay. Since this expression is less than 0, there'll be no solution for e to the y, so we include the 1 with the positive root, so the negative isn't true. So we get e to the y is equal to x plus the square root of x squared plus 1. The minus isn't included. Take natural logs, and we get y is equal to the natural log of x plus the square root of x squared plus 1, as required. Okay. Another one then. Show that our cosh of x is equal to log of x squared of x plus x the square root of x squared minus 1 where x is greater than or equal to 1. Okay. First thing, let y equal our cosh x. Inverse cosh. Replace with the expression we already know. So we need to multiply by e y, don't we? So when we do that, we get e to the 2y plus 1 is equal to 2x e to the y. Following that, we subtract 2x e to the y. So we get e to the 2y minus 2x e to the y plus 1 is equal to 0. We can complete the square on the first section of terms, as usual. Then we have to add that x squared plus 1 bit to both sides, so we get e to the y minus x all squared, 2 to x squared minus 1. We square root both sides, we get e to the y minus x is equal to plus or minus the square root of x squared minus 1. If we add the x, we get e to the y is x plus or minus the square root of x squared minus 1. It's looking kind of like what we want, but to finish it off, the square root to work, x has to be greater than 1, or equal to 1, so true for this, for the square root of x squared minus 1 is less than the square root of x squared, so the square root of x squared minus 1 is less than x, okay, so we get 0, okay, so we get x minus the square root of x squared minus 1 is greater than equal to 0, if it's greater than 0 it can't be 0, so we get x minus the square root of x squared minus 1 is positive, Okay, so for example, both the positive and the negative roots would work. So we need another way to limit the negative. So we can let u maybe come in. This, this is the difference between a square root and the square root of a number one less. For example, the difference between root three and root two. For all values, x being greater than or equal to one, this difference is between zero and one, of course. Therefore, uh, x minus the square root of x squared minus 1 is greater than 0 but less than 1. So it has to be between 0 and 1. So we can take natural logs of both sides and we get y is equal to the natural log of x plus or minus the square root of x squared minus 1, which is almost what we want. We can finish it off by replacing y as we know y is arc cosh x. So we get arc cosh of x is natural log of x plus or minus the square root of x squared minus 1. Okay, uh, as required. Okay, always nice to write as required at the end. I don't put that on this particular slide, but you could do if you want to. Okay. So, if you remember the graph of y equals arc cosh it, this is why you have to therefore be positive. However, if we do the natural log of a value between 0 and 1, we'll get a negative answer. And so we can eliminate the possibility of x minus the square root of x squared minus 1. Yeah, pretty obvious. Because you can't uh, get past this set. Yeah, just here. You can't get here, if you will. Yeah? Yeah, you know. 
proper dude on the limit, but we are. So, final expressions for our Tanax using logarithms. So, for that, why for the R Tanax? Down to the inverse of. Inverse. Inverse than. Trying to pronounce them is the hard part. Inverse than of y into x. The place for that expression that's in the top left hand corner of your screen. And we can multiply by the two, e to the 2 i minus 1. So we get e to the 2 i minus 1 is equal to x plus of e to the 2 i plus 1. We expanded out those brackets and subtracting e, x e to the 2 i and adding that 1. Okay, so we've got all the e's on the left side. We can factor it into the 2 i out. We get e to the 2 i lots of 1 minus x and 1 plus x on the other side. Divide by 1 minus x. Take that to the other side and take natural logs. So we get 2y is equal to the natural log of mod 1 plus x over 1 minus x. Remember though, you have to have modular signs whenever uh, you've got the natural log because otherwise you could be taking negatives. Okay. That modular sign means whatever negative, it will be the positive other side of it. Okay. Because if you know from normal elements, your graph kind of looks like a V. Yeah. Find by two, we get a Y is equal to one half log of one plus X over one minus X. Replacing what we know for Y, we can just say that arc tan, arc tan of X is equal to one half log of mod one plus X over one minus X. Okay. Remember that R tan X is only valid for the mod of X being less than one. So this needs to be included here as well in the domain. Okay, we've got another one here. Can have a look at. So we've now got six expressions we can use. Expressions in natural logs are sine of one, are shine of one. So for some next one, then I'm going to be ending up with the log of one plus root two. That one. So come on, so arc cosh of 2, so we know arc cosh is, replace it with 2, and you're going to end up with log of 2 plus root 3. The one, arc than of 1 over 3, or we'll sub in a third, you're going to end up with a half log of 4 thirds over 2 thirds, in module signs, so we'll get 1 half log 2. Using the power law, you can bring the half up. So you get 2 to the half, while using your indices knowledge, 2 to the half is the same as square root 2. So then with log of root 2. Now, you might be wondering why the inverse of shine is called r shine rather than arc shine, as with the regular trick functions. Now, what a good question. So let's we'll start with y arc sine, first of all. So, Arc sine then. Mm. Uh, doesn't matter when it's, if it's in degrees or radians as such. I've shown it both ways, so you're in theta and you're finding L. So if you're finding theta then, we can know that sine is the opposite of the hypotenuse, so we get inverse sine of 0 0.3 for theta. If theta is in radians, we get L is equal to R theta. So using your sector knowledge, so L must be equal to theta. Combine these, we get theta is sine to the minus 1 0 0.3, so L is sine to the minus 1 of 0 0.3, so L is equal to arc sine of 0 0.3. In the unit circle, the length of the arc is given by the inverse sine of its y coordinate. You can do a similar thing for cos using the horizontal distance instead, so the other one. Doesn't change the question, but here it does. Okay. So, generally speaking, for the unit circle where L is equal to arc sine of y, or alternatively, L is equal to arc cosh x. So, notice that you would use arc sine or arc cos depending on the coordinate x, y. Okay? So, this is going to give it away slightly, but on the diagram, area A, not alpha, is given as a is equal to a half of x, y. Take away the interval between a and b of y in respect to x. There's a the triangle. I've got to subtract the area in blue under the curve between the limits a and b. Pretty straightforward integral. 
Okay. And that the X and Y coordinates can also be expressed in terms of a third parameter. That could be T, could be any parameter you choose to be. But you can write it in terms of it in a third parameter if you would like to. So if X is to e to the T plus, my, plus e to the minus T over 2, which is uh, the formula for shine, okay? and Y is e to the T minus e to the minus T over 2, this means that the integral will need to be done parametrically. So parametric integration is covered in the second year of normal level maths. If you're wondering where that's coming from, so you need that in order to deal with this. So you get a is equal to 1 half of xy, minus the integral between 0 and t of y dx by dt dt. Obviously dt is cancelled. You should know that from normal level maths. Okay. I'm not teaching this here. I'm teaching you the hyperbolic functions. So shine, talk, and fat, if you want to. So, if we differentiate x, so get dx by dt is e to the t minus e to the minus t of 2. Or the standard differential there. Place into the t, we get this, this lovely ugly bugger. So we get a is equal to 1 half of e to the t plus e to the minus t of 2, times e to the t minus e to the minus t of 2. Take away the integral between 0 and t of e to the t minus e to the minus t of 2 times e to the t minus e to the minus t of 2 dt. I'm not going to lie to you, the hyperbolic functions have a lot of work to it. But this is available for the maths, don't forget. Okay? So that's where all that's come from, if you wonder. So I'm just subbing in. So I each pair of the brackets, okay? I'm not going to read through all that again, it's going to be a hell of a lot, so I'll leave you up for you to look at. So I've highlighted where each part has come from, so simplifying it. Right, so, <laughs> can bring the quad out the interval if we want to, be a little bit easier to deal with. So bringing that 4 off the bottom, multiplying it as a fraction. If we integrate and use a square bracket of course, we can evaluate subbing the limits. So. When you sub in t0, you get 0, so if we just sub in the upper limit t only. Expand the lot. Now if you do expand that, now I'm not going to lie to you, expanding something as nasty as that is pretty nasty. So, you get a very long thing, all in 8, for some reason, but there you go. And then you simplify. And then you end up with a is equal to half t. We can now replace t in terms of the y coordinate. We've got y is equal to e to the t minus e to the minus t of 2. Multiply by 2, we get 2y is equal to e to the t minus e to the minus t. Multiply by e to the t, we get 2y to the t is equal to e to the 2t minus 1. Subtract 2y e to the t. Complete the square, maybe. You could do it by the quadratic formula using a disguised quadratic. I think this is the best way to do it though, myself. So, e to the t minus y all squared. Take away the square of the middle, y squared, and minus the 1. That's first year, uh, first year pure a little mass, if you want Can add that y squared plus 1. Square root. Add the y. Take natural logs. We saw the limits on this earlier on. So we get the log of natural log of y plus the square root of y squared plus 1, which is equal to t. This is equivalent to the expression that we did above. So that one highlighted by the blue arrow nicely done by me. So we get r shine of y is equal to t. Now, if we replace t using the expression we just had a moment ago, as uh, our shine of y and we change to the entire region shown and labeled q so this one here on the left uh, so we'll get q is equal to r shine of y you can also do it using the x quadrant and arc koshek if you would like to I still fancy that so length l is equal to the inverse of sine of y so, since L is an arc, it was called arc. So, L is a arc's sine of Y. 
Alpha, area A is equal to the inverse of sine of Y. Since A is an area, it was called R, as in AR. So A is equal to R sine of Y. Okay? Now at this point in time, we're moving on to the hyperbolic identities. And if you want to pause here, I think I might pause this video here because it's getting around a little long again. So I'm going to end this one here and publish this up ready for next week. Um, get this all sorted. And so, uh, hopefully you've enjoyed this first video on Further Mass. There'll be another one, uh, which will be the third video in the Further Mass playlist. The next one will be uh, maybe later on in the week. So, and we'll carry on with the hyperbolic identities proving that cosh squared a minus shine squared a is equal to 1 using the definitions above. Thank you very much. Thank you so much.